In this video, I'm going to show you how to make a nav mesh door system. So just like we see in the video here, if you use a click to move type nav mesh, and it'll work with any nav mesh. In this example, I'm just using click to move. And you can see if I click and I move our player, as soon as he hits a door, he stands out of the way, lets the animation play and then walks through it. And it'll work for multiple doors in one pass. So like if I click here, it's going to walk through the first door, then go through the second and pause for each one. If these videos help you out at all, please like and subscribe, that'll help me out. And let's jump right into how to make this. So the scene that I have here, this is actually just the demo scene that comes included with a prison pack I have. I bought this off the Uni Asset Store during the Christmas sale. And I can put a link to it below, but it's not a free pack, so I can't provide anything here. Um, the sci-fi character is just another character from a different pack I have. This system will work with anything using a nav mesh, so if you have packs that you want to use for this demo, follow along. If not, you could just make this using simple planes and spears and cubes and any basic primitive. So whichever way you want to go there. The assets themselves don't really matter. It's just a nav mesh system that we're using. So on this player character that I brought in, uh, it doesn't actually have anything on it except for an animator. And it just cycles through a bunch of demo animations. So I'm just going to disable root motion. I'm not going to want that. And for now, I'm just going to disable the animator completely. And then I'm going to create my own animator with only the animations we need once we reach that point. Now I'm going to add a capsule collider on the player and then just resize it a bit to fit him a bit better. And just a note for this video, I'm not going to explain the complete basics of setting up and using a nav mesh. I already do have that in a few other videos. And there's a lot of tutorials on that online too that you could check. So if, you're, if you've never used nav mesh before, I would suggest checking one of those videos first and then come back to this one. Now I'm just going to set up our camera view. So I'm just going for kind of almost like a Resident Evil kind of game where it's just one camera shot, except this one will be a click to move instead of, you know, a player controller. So if you just angle wherever you want the camera view to be like this, and then select your camera and hit Control shift f as in Frank on the keyboard. That'll automatically align that camera to the view that you see in the scene. So then you don't have to start fidgeting with the camera angle and view and all the different settings. So you can just move your camera around, hit Control shift f and that's the view. Now let's go to the navigation pane. And if you don't see this here, go up to the window menu, AI, and then navigation, and that'll open it for you. So the demo scene I have, it looks like everything is already set to navigation static. So I can actually just hit bake and it's actually going to bake and make a correct nav mesh here. But if that's not the case, then you would have to set it manually and I'll show that here quick. Let's go back to the inspector tab and now select the objects that we want to be part of our nav mesh. So I'm just going to select these tiles here. Now if you look in the inspector for these objects, you're going to see there's a check mark next to static. And if you click the little down arrow, you'll see all the different types. The one we need is navigation static. So if that's not checked, then you would just want to check that for the objects. And that'll make it so that they bake into the nav mesh. Now, if you go back to the navigation tab and then the object tab, this is where you can actually set what these tiles are used for. So right now they're both set to walkable. So you can see all these items that are selected. That means the player can walk on them. If you changed it to not walkable, then it would make a space that the nav mesh would have to avoid and it can't walk on. Okay, so that's our basic nav mesh setup. And like I said, if some of that doesn't make sense to you, check out some of the other beginner nav mesh series out there or look at my other nav mesh video on how to make a navigation path. And that should clear up the basics for you there. Now, the one thing we do have to do is check the door so in this case, if we select the door and then look at it, this is set up correctly. It's not navigation static. And that's exactly how we want it. Because if it was, then it would block the nav mesh path and it wouldn't let you walk through. But you can see since it's not static, when we're on the nav mesh, there is a path that goes right through the door. So if we select the nav mesh again and just move the door out of the way, you can see there is actually a path going right through here. Now let's just undo that move and put our door back here. On our player, we already added a collider. So now let's add a nav mesh agent. And this is what's going to allow the player to actually work with the nav mesh. 
The default values for the obstacle avoidance look pretty big on this agent. So we're just going to lower that size a bit with the radius here. And this is basically the player bumping into objects. Now on the player, I'm going to add a player controller script and open that up. On a more serious game, you'd probably want to make this a standalone script instead of a player controller, just so you don't have everything merged together. And then you could use the same script for your player, as well as NPCs out of a patrol route, things like that, instead of having to recreate very similar code. But for this example, I'm just doing it all in one just because that's easier and quicker. So just ignore some of the programming practices on this one. I'm going to merge a lot of stuff and and do a few things that you wouldn't normally want to do in an actual game. So the first thing we want to do to actually work with nav meshing code, we need to add using unity engine.ai. And I actually typoed this one here, it's editor, so I'll correct that in a minute here. And now one thing I like doing on a script like this, since I mentioned normally you would want to use this for multi options available in your game, like patrol units and things like that. So I'll put require component and put type of nav mesh agent. And now in the future, if you were using this for multiple game objects and NPCs and stuff, you could just drag it onto a new object and it'll automatically add that nav mesh agent for you. First thing I'm going to make here is a variable to store a reference to our nav mesh agent. So I'm just going to make the variable. I don't actually need start here, so I'm going to delete that and use awake instead. Uh, it's a lot better to cache references in awake and get a reference to the nav mesh agent here. The next thing I'm going to do here is make a private method called click to move. And I'm just going to make this a simple click to move game where you click a position and your nav mesh will move to it. Now I'm going to make a ray called ray and I'm going to use the camera dot main and then screen point to ray with using the mouse position as the origin of the ray. So essentially this is going to create a ray from the mouse position on the screen. Now we need a ray cast hit variable. I'm just going to call this hit. And this is the variable that's going to store all the information about the hit. Now let's make a bool and I'm going to call it has hit. And right in the same line, I'm going to assign it. I'm going to use a physics .ray cast. I'm going to use that ray that we created and then pass in an out. So a reference to hit. And what this is going to do is take the mouse position on the screen and shoot a ray cast from there. And when it hits a collider, it's going to store that in hit. Now all we have to do is an if statement has hit. And then that means if has hit is true, which means it hits something, we'll run this code. And now so we can make the code reusable, I'm going to make another private method down below here. And I'm just going to call this one set destination. And we want to pass in a vector three and I'll just call that target. In here, let's do my nav mesh agent dot set destination. And then we're going to pass it in target. And the reason I'm doing this is that way in the future, we can call set destination without having to do a ray cast every time checking the most position. So we can just tell something to move here. Now back in our if statement, we're going to do set destination and pass it in hit dot point. So the raycast hit variable hit, that stores all the info about the collision when it hits a, a collider and point is the actual position. So now we have to actually call this code. So in update, I'm just going to do if input dot get mouse button down and we'll use zero for left click. And then in there, we'll just call click to move. And now when we run the game, you'll see nothing animates, but we can click around the scene and the player will move to where we click. But if we click out here, you notice he'll go through the door and doesn't collide. That's because he's following the nav mesh and ignoring those collisions. And that's fine. That's what we're going to work on right away. So let's go back to our game and I want to create an animator now, and I'm going to call that player animator. Select our player and then let's drag that new animator in and enable the animator again because we turned it off earlier. Now I'm going to the window menu, then animations and open the animator tab. So I do already have a few animations here that I'm using from some of my animation packs. But if you need free animations, I do have a video as well that I'll link below. It shows you how to get free animations from Mixamo.com and how to import them. So check that out if you need. So for the sake of this video, all we need is two animations, just something to play while they're idle 
and then something to play either for a walk or a run when the player is moving. So use whatever you want. I'm just going to drag two in here that I have. Now under the parameters tab in the animator, I'm just going to make a bool and I'm going to call it is running. I'm going to make a transition from idle to run and then one back to idle. Now on the settings for the, the state going from idle to run, I'm going to take off exit time and I'm going to set the condition to be is running true and remove fixed duration. And I'll just leave the transition duration as is. For the transition from running to idle, I'm going to do the exact same thing, except we just want to make sure the condition is false, not true. That should be good for the animations in Animator. Let's go back to our player controller, and now we just need to cache a reference to the animator, so the exact same way we did for the nav mesh agent. Now in set destination, I'm just going to use my animator and dot set bool and set is running to be true, and this will play the run animation. Now when we run the game, when we click to move the player, he's going to start running. Uh, the only problem with this right now is he won't stop running. So that's the next thing we'll have to do. But it's good to troubleshoot by running your code constantly to make sure it's working as you want before you add more things. To make the player actually stop in update, I'm going to do a check on its position here. So we're going to do if vector3.distance and we'll pass in the nav mesh agent's destination, so its target and its current position. And we're going to check if that's less than the nav mesh's stopping distance. So basically it's going to work out how far it has to go to the target yet, and then check the settings on the agent itself and see what stopping distance is. So once those values are true, then we know we've reached the target and we can stop. And then inside here, we'll set the, the bool in the animator to be false. If we go run the game now, now when we move, the player will actually run or walk to the position and then he'll stop animating once he gets there. So this does seem to be working fine, but our player turns really slow. So I'm just going to adjust some of the settings here. If you select the player on the nav mesh settings, I'm going to change the angular speed and turn that up a lot. So I'm going to try 2000 here. And then acceleration, I'll up that a bit too. So he starts faster. So I'll put that to 15. And we'll see this looks a lot smoother already. They're not the best settings, but they're good enough for this demo. So I am currently in play mode. So if I hit stop, all these settings are going to be wiped out. So I'm just going to click on the hamburger menu on the component, copy the component values, hit stop on the game, and then paste the component values. And that'll put all the ones I set in there. That's about all we need set up for the player. So now let's move on to working on the actual door itself.